There we are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 415. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to review uh, the answers given on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us this morning, we have uh, Micah fischer Kirchner. Micah is based uh, in the on the uh, east coast of east west coast of the USA. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, he is uh, um, the the driver of um, a, an SEO meetup group uh, uh, not too far from Silicon Valley, um, and he's also the author. What did you call the book, uh, Micah? That the book. Uh, uh, a president's daily brief. So every day, and you, you took, I don't know how you did that. I, I got tired reading it. <laughs> um, anyway, Masataki Wasa is based uh, in um, London. He lives in the suburb of Wimbledon. He's a Google product expert um, in the AdSense uh, community. You can find Masataka at W-A-S-A-W-E-B dot N-E-T. Tim Kappa is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's based uh, in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, yes, um, what am I missing here? Uh, oh, that's right. He, his uh, agency ha has an award that... Um, as the best local search agency here for Middle Earth. Um, let us go to our first question. Um, I'll try and figure out. Um, I'll, I'll try and figure out how to present it. Uh, Chris Green asks a question titled: Can a subdomain potentially hurt the main site? Uh, he says, "Hi guys." Uh, we plan on building a subdomain called giveaways.domain.com and launch uh, giveaways. The main site is about gadgets. Can this potentially hurt the main site in any way um, with SEO? It's, it's on a subdomain, and so uh, I expect Google to treat it separately. I mean, if you're worried about it, in any shape or form, you can always just know index the <clears throat> the giveaway subdomain, and then you don't have to worry about anything. Um, so, you know, if you're ever worried about it, just just don't let don't don't have it in the the, the SERPs. Um, but yeah, in terms of it being a seen as separate subdomain or not or separate domain or not, I mean that it, it'll just depend on how um, how integrated it is within the website. Um, and so if it's, it's fairly isolated, Google will generally, uh, kind of treat it differently. Um, yeah. So I, I, mainly if you have any fear of that, just, just take it out of the index and you'll be fine. Thank you, Micah. Uh, anybody else? All right. Okay. Um, Amanda Fong asked a question, and it's, it's number two on our run list. It's titled The Rebranding Penalty. Uh, Amanda said a client did a very rash rebrand around four weeks ago, only to find that the new brand name has already been registered in a key foreign market. If rebranding with a new name so soon after the last time, uh, will he be penalised by Google? Uh, you're not, <laughs> I would say you're not doing a rebrand if you're already thinking of doing another rebranding. Um, or you, you don't really seem to care about the brand. Uh, it would not you person, but just generally, if you're having to go and brand again, that's not a good sign. Um, that, yeah, what you're doing, is not really for branding. So at that point, if there's a, you know, you've already put your foot down on what the brand is, you're going to have to, you know, push through it. Um, you're just going to create even more confusion around uh, what the new brand 
name is. So I I generally would not go for trying to do another rebrand so soon. Um, how Google takes it, I mean, again, you're gonna, you know, are you gonna have to do promotions and re push things out there and retell everybody? Oh no, you know. Haha, uh, just kidding. The re real rebrand is this instead. You know, I, I think just all around it's a bad idea, regardless of both from a user perspective and anything that Google might understand. Um, I would just avoid doing it. Yeah, it's definitely a case of ouch, isn't it? Um, I'm wondering whether they went back to the previous brand or they are going for another one. So, you know, those are two different situations, isn't it? Neither of which is ideal. But in the sense that if you're going back, then that might be slightly easier than having to deal with three brands. So the old one, the new one you've abandoned after four weeks, and yet another one. You know, that's going to complicate things. It's not really, I think, a search issue as such, it is about branding and ensuring that people land on the correct brand and people know the correct brand as it is now. And that's, I think, a multifaceted task and perhaps sort of um, worrying about Google is not perhaps the priority in a sense, because as long as you get the branding and marketing right, then there wouldn't be a problem with search. Thank you, Mr. Taggy. All right, um, will we move on to number three? Okay. This one from Gaston Sitbon. Uh, um, I mean, is this 1990 something? Um, white fonts on a white background. Oh my God. Uh, I'm wondering if Google and others will penalize me for using white fonts uh, to hide keywords in my description. But wait, he said, before, before you jump on me and say yes, I'm using four keywords that are relevant and actual products uh, um, uh, on, on my website. He said, the reason I'm using the white fonts is because Yoast won't give me the green light if they're not exactly where Yoast wants them. Uh, so rather writing descriptions that um, don't flow well or are too repetitive, I'm using the white fonts. I'm not keyword stuffing or anything like that. Um, do any of you uh, use this? Uh, has it backfired in some way? Thanks. <laughs> but wait there's more are you trying to rank for on google or yoast and if the answer is google ignore yoast <laughs> yeah it's, go it's, for it tim or <laughs> no it's the case of sort of putting the cart before the horse isn't it <laughs> um uh. I shall leave it to Mr. Kappa to to blast away. So, so Gaston, you you have um, <clears throat> you have just done you, you, <laughs> the reason when I get my hands on a client's site, the first thing I literally do is disable all of the traffic lights in in yoast so that the clients when they start getting to grips with their site aren't tempted to do what you're doing right which is try and get a green light by shoving in uh keywords key phrases all over the place okay um and the next bit is asking about the white you know sort of hidden text um did, did, i wonder if google updated something somewhere about that at some point 
Anyway, it's a no-no, but I'm sure there is something somewhere from Google going, yeah, just don't do it. Yeah, and, and look, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Gaston, I realise that the name of our, our recording is uh, Dar Messia Questions. Um, we weren't laughing at you, we, we were laughing with you. I think, I hope. Yeah, yeah, it just, look, there's this misconception, you know, uh, from people that Yoast SEO does the SEO for you. Um, yeah, SEO tool, people think, oh, I'm going to get this, chuck it in. So what you have to understand is that Yoast is a tool which is trying to help you uh, in the sense of understand when you chuck in that, whatever the heck they call it, the phrase thingy, it then uses that based upon what you've got on your page to try and give you uh, a, a, an idea on if you're actually talking about that. So I think total red light is if you've you haven't got it in your 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 h1 your body content uh or even your title um so you know it's trying to guide you in the right direction but it doesn't mean that you should shove keywords in there um and hide them from users pretty much because it looks crap uh, but then you're trying to hide them from Google, which Google, you know, is, is not going to appreciate at all. Um, so, so yeah, you know, use it as a tool. I think, I think like half of uh, maybe even 90% of like pages on client sites are all in the red um, because I literally disable them. If I had to turn it on, it would be, it, it would be red everywhere. Um, because your, your, your page should be for the user. It should be, you know, when they land on there, the user should find what they, they're looking for. The user should find, um, whatever it may be, whether it be a product or whatever. Um, so you should be writing for the users, but structuring it for search engines. So kind of get over the whole green light red light all that kind of stuff in fact you probably do yourself a favor by turning it all off okay let's look at number four on our run list it's titled legal service schema uh kunjal chohan wants to know can legal service schema only be used by a government organization or could they also be used by a private organization selling services like immigration looks like we're leaving Micah Fisher Kirshner good night mate cheers Micah thank you for the cheers. time you thank you cheers mate uh no control you can use it for uh in a uh, league like legal type of service it doesn't have to be government um <clears throat> no you can use it you're marking up that service it's not a problem excellent all right um let's move on to the next this one um is from um, nathan gadai um nathan um has a question, it's number five on our run list, it's titled, uh, it's in the site map, but not on the site. He said, so my client is a plastic surgeon in New York City, and I have a bunch of high quality articles, such as best New York City surgeons and top cosmetic clinic in New York City. He doesn't mind if it shows up on the website, but I want to only add it via html and xml sitemaps i won't feature it on the blog is that uh, going to still help the site um to um 
um, rank better uh, in terms of keywords, etc. Uh, and this is confusing me slightly. So the question indicates that something is in the sitemap, but not on the site, but it is on the site. Yeah. He doesn't want to. He just doesn't want visitors to find that or read that. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Then what's the point? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if it's high quality and useful for visitors, then that should be accessible to visitors. You should want people to read that article. Yep. I know. Uh, just don't understand this. Okay. So we'll call this one a wrap for Nathan. Yep. Okay. Let's go to the next. Uh, Amy Brad uh, asked a question titled, what's the risk of free slash paid guest posting? Um, she goes on to say, what's the risk of free paid guest posting on the same niche sites, same domain authority, but unknown? So... Uh so, I mean, Michael covers it here. Look, f free and paid, what's the risks? The, the, the risks are pretty much the same. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, Michael says that the links could be ignored. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go straight with um, these are essentially against um, Google Webmaster guidelines on uh, link schemes. Um You know, it, it 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 all works on. It all works on how Google can basically understand um, the the site or the or the article itself. So the site in general and the article itself. You know, loads and loads and loads of high authority. You know, even newspapers have guest authors. Um, uh, but they google tends to understand who's writing it there doesn't typically be a there isn't typically a link to the thing there's an author bio where there will be a link you know if the author um, has has a site um things like this um also now under you know if you're doing this in order to manipulate um uh search results uh well not search results search you know your, your performance within within search results um then google also says you should be either using no follow um uh user generated which this wouldn't be because it's not a comment or sponsored which if it was paid there should be a rel sponsored link pointing back to wherever the um to whatever you're linking to uh whoever paid for it um so there are some uh, you know uh things in there but the risks are all, all, all kind of the same you know um one your best bet your so the, the the lower risk end is that google ignores it the higher end is that you hit, have a manual penalty thank you tim All right, then let's uh, move on to the next. This is number seven on our run list from uh, Aisha Ali. Um, it's titled, Should We Create Backlinks by Using a Different Browser? Um, Aisha said, uh, actually, I want to ask uh, that should we create backlinks by using a different browser? Um, other than Google, uh, I think you mean Chrome. Um, so Google won't be able to detect the same backlinking strategies or IP addresses. And should we create backlinks on anchor text having our exact keywords, or should we use some uh, uh, different um, 
relevant keywords and backlinks on the domain name like a mixture of them? Uh, okay, so Aisha, you think that just by using a different IP address uh, or, or whatever the case may be, is going to fool Google. Like, really? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. And I wouldn't, like, uh, uh, how, like, I, I don't understand how creating different IPs and all this, why that would even matter to where this link was that Google, in theory, you want to find so that it, it you know, it, 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 it does something. Um, like, how would that, I, I just really don't even know that. Yeah, I just, I, <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. Um, so, Aisha, I think you should Google yourself, Google Webmaster Link Schemes, okay? Have a good read of it. Understand what you're getting yourself into and what the potentials are, okay? Do your due diligence, then make your decisions, and using different browsers and IP addresses is not going to matter a jot. That's a stern lecture for you, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I well, mean, I like it was delivered without any swear words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like, what is going on? What? Oh, oh, man, I think we have a new generation of people reading really bad information online now. Mm, yeah, yeah, it does feel that way. We, yeah. we had a question about the um, hidden text earlier. Yeah. I mean, so, like, how 1980s is that? It does feel like that we are on a on a long term cycle. So you know, it must have, you know, it's something that would have been done oof mid two thousands. Yeah. Sort of fifteen years ago, something like that. I mean it might just be that we are living in that sort of cycle, you know, where things come up in fifteen year cycles. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look. I, the risk of sounding old. Um, I mean, uh, it, it was always like this back in the days of uh, Alta Vista, um, because we're, we're looking at a, a, a great unknown. We, 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 we don't. We can't see, uh, or you know, there's a reason why we can't reverse engineer. Uh, um, search engines like google or bing um yeah I'm, I'm sorry i'm rambling let's go to the next um nathan bradshaw asked the question would dot us uh help in ranking in the united states uh he said uh, i i said help uh not depending on the extension that dot us um will be enough for us ranking Look, if dot com would be ideal, yeah, dot com would be ideal. But if <clears throat> all that you have available is dot us, um, well, then that's your, you know, that's your option. I mean, you, you know, Nathan says dot com and dot net um, are both taken; they're not live. Um, so that really is the only option. Go for it. I'm not going to say help in ranking. I'm just not going to answer that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, this another one from Nathan Gadai. Uh, he says, does Google read and index Google Slides? Um, or... 
is invisible because it needs to be clicked um, to slide. Uh, no, they, they um, Google can, but you have to make it public, um, as Michael says there. Um, most things you so yeah, Google Slides, you can create, uh, I mean, even if you're using um, like a, uh, a, um, a Word doc, um, map, if you've created a map, um, you've got to make them public. Mm -hmm. And some great answers from uh, Perry Bernard and uh, um, Michael Martinez. I just don't know Michael uh, how, how he gets the strength, um, but uh, he he certainly gets it. All right, um, let's um, move on to number not no. It's thank you for watching time. Um. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. But before we go, I must thank uh, you, uh, Tim Kappa, um, Masataki Wasa, and uh, uh, Michael Fisher Kirshner. Um, David Roseanne couldn't be with us, uh, had a, 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 an urgent appointment. Um, yeah, and Richard Hearn, we normally or hope to see Richard Hearn. Uh, every now and then um so uh i thank you guys and i also people uh, who answer questions uh, on a daily basis uh, on the dumb seo questions facebook group um and people like michael martinez michael stricker brenda malone um but thank you very much and uh, as i said we'll be gone now but um they got a, a new button. I don't even know how to turn this thing off. Uh, let me see. <laughs> um, no, that doesn't. Oh, yes, there we are. Stop recording. Okay.